Today we're going to be talking about a new class pet, or a pet in general, and that's the crawdad. <laughs> So hello and welcome. I am shooting at a super weird angle because the animal we're talking about uh, has to remain in a tank and I can't move the tank. I have to come to it, which means I am currently just kind of hanging over my counter here to make sure I am in the shot with the tank. So sorry for like the weird kind of like crooked body angle, uh, but this is the Thing we're going to talk about and you can't see him right now you're really just looking at an empty tank for the most part but let's go ahead and insert some clips while I just introduce you to this animal so let's let's watch him for a second but um, basically I just want to talk about a crawdad or in some regions maybe like a crayfish or a crawfish where I grew up they were called crawdads so that's what I'm gonna call them but basically they're they're like giant shrimp or mini lobsters. They're kind of an in-between animal, but regardless of how you kind of think of them, they're just crustaceans and they're really, really cool. And the reason why I want to show you it today is because this is one of my class pets. So if you watched my Meet All My Pets video, I did go to my classroom to show you the pets that I kept there, but it's summertime now and he's home with me. And so since, you know, we're spending some time <laughs> together at home, um, I, I was like, oh, you know what, I wanna, I wanna kinda talk about him. Cause I think he gets ignored because he's such an easy animal. But that's why I wanna talk about him today because he's such an easy animal. And so let's just start with why I think they're so cool. Uh, and then we'll go into some, a little bit of depth into the care. So the reason why I think these guys are so cool is because they have booming personalities. You're not believing me right now because he's hiding, but the personality on these guys, they're they're considered aggressive, basically. So that's why I, you don't see any other tank mates. There's no other shrimp, there's no other fish. So they are aggressive, but because of that aggressive nature, they are not afraid to kind of come out and show themselves in the daytime, which is when I have them during class. So if you're watching this and you're considering it for uh, like a kid or your classroom or even yourself and you just want something you're going to see, because there's a lot of animals that are cool but you don't see them because they're either nocturnal or they're shy. Second reason why I like them is because they are an aquatic tank animal. They, they spend their entire life in an aquarium. And I think it's, I like that because then it's contained. So basically it's easier to control because I just have to control this small space. It also takes up less room. It's not like, you know, like a rodent or even like a rabbit where you'd have to have really large space because those are active animals. Although crawdads are active, but they're small. So you can put them in a smaller tank. We'll talk about that too in a second. He's coming out. Can you see him on camera? Can, is he there? Another thing that's really cool with these guys is they come in many colors. They come in like a grayish green, they come in a bright red, and they come in a bright blue. And honestly, I, I'd love to have a bright blue one because those are, those are the coolest. But he's a red one, um, and he is starting to peek out now. But he's a red one, and I love the color because he is very vibrant, and it's, so it's, it's pleasing to look at. And like I said, he's easy to find, so it's super easy care. Because these guys are, you know, from like streams and lakes and rivers, uh, you could find them in the wild actually. They're very hardy animals and so for that reason it makes care really easy. So the minimum tank size you're going to want is a 10 gallon. I will say this is actually a five and a half gallon. This is his vacation home right now because we are home for the summer. Um, I, I don't have the means to haul a aquatic 10 gallon tank back and forth so this tank actually stays at my house and then there's the 10 gallon at school. Uh, but they just need a 10 gallon minimum and the length is kind of more important than the height. And so even though this is a five and a half gallon, the, the like floor space dimensions are very close to a 10 gallon. So he's not missing out too much and he's only gonna be in here a couple months and then he'll go back to the big tank. Uh, but he still has plenty of room to kind of roam and go places in here, which is great and cool. So 10 gallon minimum. Food wise, because they're hardy animals, you could feed them like quite a diverse range of food. And um, you, I guess you could feed them one type of food their whole life, like fish flakes or something, but I like to mix it up. Most often I feed algae tabs and fish flakes, mostly. And then second mostly, kind of kind of often, but not a lot, 
Um, I also feed bloodworms, and so that's the most rotation. And then for special occasion, and um, this is why they're good for teaching, but for special occasion, uh, he will also get feeder fish. Yes, these guys do hunt fish, which is why you can't house them with fish. Or if you choose to, make sure you're not attached to those fish or you're buying too expensive of a fish. So if I do buy fish, it's feeder, minnows, and then those go in there. And so if you are planning on keeping these in a classroom or you live a busy lifestyle, I like that these guys eat fish because uh, he's not gonna like hunt and kill every single fish in one day, right? It takes time to do that. And also once he's full, he's not motivated to kill a ton of fish which means if you put say five fish in there he's gonna kill them over a month's span which is what I like because when I go on vacations for the classroom like on winter break for two weeks I'm not coming into the room for two weeks and he actually stays there so what I do is I just make sure this is set up and nice and full when I leave and the water level over two weeks because this is a closed hood my classrooms the same thing if you cover your top the the water doesn't evaporate too bad so usually when I come back it's like I mean, this is probably a month's worth of water loss already, um, but water's usually fine. And then you have your filter that's just constantly running. I just put lights on a timer. And so that really leaves to like, well, how do you feed it if you're gonna be gone for two weeks? First of all, they are hardy. If, if you didn't feed it for two weeks, they'll, they'll make it. But if you feel bad, what I always did is on the day I leave, I just put a couple algae tabs in there so he has something to start. And then I'll put in like five minnows. And honestly, I came back from winter break and there are still two minnows left, which means he had caught and eaten the other three in the meantime. So I really like these guys because you can essentially feed them while you're gone. As far as water parameters go, I'll be honest, I, I don't test the water too often because the water here is just average water. Um, so pH is seven. And then as long as like, which is neutral, like you just want kind of neutral water. Uh, and then as long as it's not like, as long as you don't have like hard water or water that's like overly, like needs to be filtered or something. But if you feel weird about that, just buy purified water in a jug. And then lastly, the only drawback to these guys is they're escape artists. So not, I don't have a hood here just for the light or the looks or to keep water from evaporating. I, I have this here because they're known to be escape artists. I will say he's never escaped, so I don't know if that's just due to me, you know, keeping the lid on, but even though there's actually a big gap right here where the filter's at, and he's never escaped. So they can be escape artists, I think if you give them an easily available exit, but if you just kind of take general precautions, like cover up the top and then where this gap's at, just make sure nothing's tall there for them to climb out of, you're, you don't have to worry about anything. If you have any questions about crop dads, put them in the comments. Um, and if you have a class pet, tell me what it is in the comments. And like I said, I, I'm talking about this like it's a class pet, but anybody could get a crop dad. And they're, they're so cool. And if you don't know where to get one, I got mine at, at Petco. Uh, pet stores do sell these guys. And if you like this video, give it a like. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave a comment. And as you know, I post new videos every Friday, so I will see you next week. And have a great week, bye.